Hello and welcome at the International 7 and here with me is Tal Isaac, also known as Fly from Team OG or OG Red Bull. How is it correct now? Just OG for now. For it's now. Okay, yeah. Oh, and probably it would be OG Red Wings or something like that. OG I mean, Wings. For now we're just stuff. OG, partnered with Red Bull, so uh, yeah, I mean, OG is good. Still, what happened to Dream Green? To what be new fair, slogan you will have? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's still there. You can still say it. It's okay. Even though the colors are not green, it's still our hashtag. Um, but we're still kind of waiting for something organic to come up. You know, like we thought about this, uh, Evany thought about this OG wings, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but obviously we're waiting for something new to arise because that's how we got it from the first place from the community, the Dream Green. So Well, we still have Goog from yeah, Boston Yeah, we still Major. have Goog, <laughs> so I hope people don't chant that in the crowd. That's going to sound weird, but, you know, <laughs> OG is okay. So, and speaking about you as a personality, so everything starts from people who are around us. So, your father as sort of, let's just say, role model for you. How did he influence the personality you are actually at the moment and this fighter mentality how did it help to build your let's just say dota mindset okay competitive mindset well i would say um since my dad has been involved in competition most of his life he used to compete in like uh, judo and jiu-jitsu and he was a trainer for a long time uh, so growing up i would definitely have this kind of like he would push for these things, uh, you know, I would used to go to chess classes and compete, I would do judo classes and compete and all these things, so uh, I've always had this kind of like competition going for myself. Uh, whether I wanted it or not was a different story, I don't even know myself at this point, but it, it kind of grew on me and I definitely saw myself having, you know, to be in some sort of competition uh, later on when I would grow up. Uh, I felt like this would be kind of a natural fit for me. And Commando Krav Maga, but you, st you still participated in some of the promotional materials and right. courses. It's a bit different from ordinary martial arts. Right, so Commando Krav Maga was uh, something that was founded by my father, uh, Moni Isaac. And it's basically, uh, he took Krav Maga and he adopt, like, adapted it and evolved it towards something newer and, and more modern. Uh, and basically created his own unique like interpretation and style of it uh, and I think it's just a lot it's basically very modern and would suit a lot more to daily uh, things that could happen to you. But these things that you use while fighting especially in this unstable more real-to-life environment so does it help you to build your gaming career in terms of fast reaction and overall thinking of general picture? I would say uh, specifically in Dota you definitely need to be a quick thinker and obviously having to go any sort of like training this helps you kind of uh, build your mind up and uh, I think it definitely helps me uh, and I'm pretty sure it did something to my brain at least to help so I would say it, it is helpful. And also for a couple of last tournaments especially Kia Major Finals and even Group Stage I have noticed that your team tend to play let's just say deep into late game and you seem to wait for your opponent to make a mistake like this way of thinking don't you think <laughs> that it would let's just say um, be a sort of challenge for other teams to use extremely aggressive early game style against you uh, i would say it's a lot of teams kind of have this uh, type of gameplay it just depends on what you like to run what heroes you kind of you want to run and and your play style so uh, I would say for us, a lot of our playstyle, especially in Kiev Major, we would maybe have like better win conditions or, or like the later the game goes, it goes better for us, but then we would sacrifice the early game and then teams would try to exploit that. And what would happen is if they are successful at exploiting that, for example, Virtus Pro, they're very good at doing this. They're one of the best early game teams in the world. They would do this and then we would be in the back foot, but then all we need is actually one opportunity. And if they give us this one opportunity, the game's over for them right away. Um, so. That's something that happened in Kiev Major specifically, you know, they're crushing us, lose one fight, game's over for them. Like, it's impossible to come back from that point, almost impossible for them. Uh, so, it, is, well, it was a unique style for us. I think it is a bit different now, but, you know, that's how we like it's to play trademark. sometimes. Yeah, it's a trademark, it's some OG Dota, basically. <laughs> and before OG, you tended to have, let's just say, all your teams were based on former Han players. Yeah. It seemed to have like this community, almost all of you <laughs> are extremely successful in terms of Dota. So just for, for stars, 
how different, like in basic terms, Han is from Dota? I would say Han is a... It was a very good game in the beginning, uh, although I would say it's more simple than Dota. And the main difference for me was actually how fast the game is. So you take Han, for example, you would use a spell or whatever, it's way faster. Y your turn rate, everything is a lot faster. So you would have a lot more room for error. In Dota, you, you click wrong, you make the wrong turn, you cast a spell in a different direction, you're actually gonna get punished for it. Uh, so it was a lot smarter in my eyes, Dota. So. Uh, Han, it started out as a good game for me, but I think Dota is just a, a way more advanced and, and smarter game in most of the aspects, really. And also, what do you think, if not the money, would Han be a sort of better and more popular esports nowadays? I don't think so. I think people who like Dota, it is kind of a, a community, and now they're obviously trying to bring in new players, but it is mostly people that have already played the game or, or whatever, and. Um, it has this special feel to it, you know, the strategy and, and like it's such a in like such a like you can go so deep into this game uh, that you can never get out. <laughs> so I feel like um, Dota is, is very unique. It's probably the only game I think that can actually do this. OK, and speaking about this Han community first years in Dota, there is one more name associated with all that time. No tail. Right. So <laughs> how did it happen that you came across this guy and what was the start of this famous bromance, let's, let's call it that way. <laughs> so um, we played Han uh, and I was, at the time I was playing in some amateur team with Nova back in the days. And I remember playing this, just a pub game and we played against no -Tail, And I kind of felt like this guy is really good. So I was just, I started talking to him, like, you know, what, what's up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, would you like to try on this, you know, amateur team? And he ended up wanting to try it and it just went from there really like that was before even becoming fanatic or anything we were ILX back then but that's kind of how I got to know him but from a pub game <laughs> still you are together for like let's just say hell of a number of years and what makes him so easy to put up with easy, easy to live with like that <laughs> uh, he's I think more than anything um, personality wise I like people like good human beings next to me and I think he's just he's just that guy you know he he's very he's just a good person like there's, there's not much to say about it he's very kind he's very nice he, he can be funny you know good guy like and, and it fits well with my you know personality like you want good people next to you right well there are lots of different guys around you but still whatever happened no matter what the team no matter what the reshuffle or let's just say disband you two were always together, so there should be some sort of, let's just say, inner bonding that really helped you be together, even in terms of OG rebounds. Yeah, uh, I definitely think he's a, you know, one of my best friends. Um, and besides that, we also like respect each other's just skill as well, because it is a factor in the end, because we both want to win. And you know, I always see this incredibly, incredibly talented player in front of me, and I guess he sees the same thing, because else, you know, we wouldn't be playing together. Uh, so. I would say that's a big part of it. Like we respect e respect each other, and we're good friends, uh, and our personalities just mesh really. Like that's how it is. And have you ever thought of, let's just say, like punching his face, so <laughs> something like that? So were there any <laughs> any situation where this story of you two could easily come to an end? Well. I never, there was definitely times where I would get frustrated at him or like certain things and I'm sure it was the other way as well, but it was never at the point where I was like, there's no way I can play with this guy anymore. I don't think this ever happened to me or ever occurred. Uh, like we did have this like one, you know, break where uh, I got a kick from Secret and later on he got kicked as well and he got invited by Cloud9. Uh, I think that was probably for me the hardest moment because I felt like after he gets kicked from Secret we might do something together again. But he went it up to. He ended up going towards uh, Cloud9, which I totally respect in the end. Like looking back at it, it's you know he gets uh, invited to one of a one of the better teams, and meanwhile I'm just you know chilling and didn't really find anything. Uh, so I respect that. But that was probably like I would say the hardest moment for me. But looking back at it, it's totally understandable because uh, in the end, like he wants to win as well, right? And that's what matters. Um, but we were still friends, disregarding that. Well, in the end, you're still together. Yeah, here, I mean, new team. even when we were different teams, we were still friends. And we met up in TI, we were sitting together and having fun as well, so. Okay, so speaking about your long-lasting competitive history, 
So what was, let's just say, the most memorable loss for you that taught you the most? <laughs> memorable loss. Oh, there's, there's too many at this point. <laughs> the um, I mean, every year uh, losing TI has been very big for me. And uh, last year in particular, that was the first time I came to a tournament as a, you know, somebody who's actually going to go win it <laughs> to the international. So that loss definitely helped me see things in a different way. Um, and yeah, that, that was definitely a memorable experience, you could say. So, and speaking about this TI, so whatever the outcome, I have previously talked to Sebastian and he said that you plan to stay with this roster as long as possible. You plan even to prolongate anything to the term, like where everything fits. So do you still, up to this point, that whatever happens, no matter what will be on stage in a couple of days, you will be together after TI. I and mean, I can only speak for myself. So I'm very happy with this current team and I would happy continuing. I think we have proved before that we can be the best and we have proved like we also had downfalls as well. But uh, what matters is like, I do feel like this team, you know, together we're good and there's definitely more good than bad. And that's uh, something to look at for a team because it might not always be the case. So for myself, yeah, I'm very happy with this team, but I can only speak for myself. So we'll see about that. Yeah. We'll so you know the community. Community talks lots of different trash, but there is a of question course. that was bothering lots of people. So what was the reason behind picking Anna? Picking Anna? Yeah. Well, this was, um, to be honest, this was a bit of a, a gamble, you could say. Uh, it's a, it was a risky choice because what happened was um, I talked to this guy in China like a year ago. Uh, it's more than a year ago, sorry, like a year and a half ago while we were still with the previous roster and he told me about this young kid named Anna cool, whatever, you know, we got our roster uh, there's nothing to do about it later on after, you know, Miracle ended up leaving and all that we were looking for somebody new and I just couldn't find the right person from like the existing pool like, we just didn't find the right guy so I, I remember this conversation I had with this, this guy in China and, and I reached out to him and I ended up talking to Anna. I watched a bit of his games, even though I was on vacation technically, which wasn't, you know, it was half a vacation. Um, it was a bit of a risk, you could say. Like we said, you know, worst case, if it really doesn't work out, there's going to be the next shuffle. But it was a, a risk worth taking because we didn't really have a, um, I didn't really see anything better than to try and build someone up who's so young and has, he definitely has talent. Uh, and I think like it, it took a very long time for him to actually become this good like in the big in the beginning the first major I don't think he was anywhere near his peak like and people you know were still saying bad things about him but now I don't think people say bad things about him as much like you can see how good the guy is I mean he's you know he's almost 10k he, he carries us like half the game so <laughs> he's good so comparing two versions of OG like the last one and this v2.0 so what major differences, I'm not saying about positive or negative sides, definitely not. Okay. What major things were changed and what shifts in, uh, let's just say, team structure and management for you as a captain have happened? I mean, the players change and each player requires something else to be enabled. So I would say that kind of shapes up the, the way the team works. Uh, I would say, for example, Crit, is, is, he is different from Jerex. Jerex needs certain things to happen in the game. He needs his certain type of freedom. Uh, you know, Crit, like he can be very structure-wise. Like it's a bit different. So something Notel and myself do very well is that we are good at accommodating towards what the people need in our team. That's one of our strengths. And that's why uh, most, team, most players we will pick up now, we will be able to enable them. Uh, you know, Anna needs certain things. He, he needs to have the, his space in the game to actually, you know, get what he needs. And, and I mean, S4, I think, is probably the more, uh, he's more self-sufficient. He can do well with whatever. So I would say we just had to adjust around the players we have, really. It is, it is different, though. So, and uh, have you ever thought of, let's just say, a trick of switching positions between players? Because lots of you really are adjusted to playing different roles. Right. Um, well, the main one, I think the only one you can actually really do is switch between middle and carry. Uh, I think that matters the least and we have done so in this tournament um, with like Ana playing, you know, anti-mage or, or void and Yuan playing uh, whatever death profits. Uh, so we, you know, we want to see what's the best way for to enable the players and if 
Ana is going to be do better playing anti-mage than you would Death Prophet, then we would switch it. But it's not like we're going to put this guy off lane all of a sudden. I think that's not going to happen. I think these are the only real roles you can switch. And you can switch between 4 and 5, like who actually has farm priority. But that kind of happens naturally in the game. You don't usually have to really talk about it. Okay, and speaking about performance, you're a supporter of a healthy lifestyle, because that's your background, naturally. And your sponsor is Red Bull, and we know that different players tend to have and to use different sort of stimulants for performance enhancement. So okay. do you support the idea that, let's just say, these specialized branding and energy stuff will work I don't mean like Adderall or some other no. illegal stuff. I think Red Bull, uh, to me, they're, it's not so much about the drink, it's actually about what the brand represents. And they're promoting, you know, sports and these things. And that's what matters to me more than anything. Uh, but for example, if you're, you're going on, you know, this major finals, the Kiev major finals, and I know some of the guys, you know, they needed some sort of help to push through these eight, like it was actually an eight hour series. When I didn't even realize, but it was eight hours. Something that at least helps them at least push it towards the end then that's when actually the Red Bull the drink comes in and that's when it can be helpful but for the most part for me Red Bull is just more about the overall brand than anything uh, and they're trying to help us in any way possible and that's what matters to me and you know that's why I'm so happy that they're they chose us so yeah okay so your first opponent will be team infamous I don't ask you any like let's just say predictions but like in general <laughs> so these guys are really new and it's really important for South America how they perform. So what can you, let's just say, tell about the potential of South American guys? Because in a way you have encountered like Peruvians, Brazilians, and some right. other stuff. Um, about the potential of the scene. I think the scariest team is that they are not, like they're playing just to play. And they're not, they're not playing to not lose. And you see the difference, right? That means they're probably gonna relieve pressure off themselves and just play in a more natural way while we're going into this match and you know, a lot of people are looking at us, they're already like, oh, surprise that OG is in the lower bracket, why not? And people are gonna try to put you know, more pressure on us. So I think that's a scary team. Like the scariest thing about that team is that they're gonna just, they're just gonna play Dota, right? Um, so either way, I think this is great for South America to even have this opportunity. And, and you know, they've taken some good games off of good teams. I definitely think it's gonna be like, they can do it. You know? It's scary for us think about but we're gonna have to play good dota and then the better team wins that's how it is okay so that sounds well and before we let you go would you like to give any shout outs uh thanks for having me first of all uh thanks to my team uh, all the people supporting us and of course red, thanks for red bull and that's it so thank you sir it was my pleasure so that was fly from team og we wish them all the best and you please like comment subscribe and share and wait for more videos to come